we made it to part three <laughs> i applaud you man thanks for sticking around okay so this part is going to focus on numbers and little technical details associated with my double century ride that i did last summer and if you want to know the whole story behind it the purpose the preparation the mindset the focus i did two videos one yesterday on one the day before yesterday if you're watching this later on this won't make sense. Also in the first part I sort of explained myself why am I doing this so that you would understand where I'm coming from and won't take me out of context. That's basically the only reason behind all the disclaimers and all of that stuff. Especially for this video because there are so many ways to do a double century, meaning what you eat, how much you drink, how many times you stop, how much do you rest, what speed are you going on, what power do you hold, are you doing this for overall time, you know, all of this depends on the person and all I can really do is just share my experience and I cannot tell you what you should do or is going to be better for you. So this is just what I did and I'm sure that there's plenty of room for for improvement for myself and I always try to make my life easier and learn from other people you know <laughs> and pretty much all I did is copied other people's tactics for this ride I guess we'll start with all that you can see on Strava so I did 320 k's in 13 hours 45 minutes and 15 seconds the overall elevation was 572 meters as I said before, this will not be relatable to a lot of people because the landscape that we have here in Latvia is just flat as fuck. There's no hills, no mountains, none of that. And if it was a hilly landscape, then I'm sure that my time wouldn't be 13 hours and it wouldn't be as easy as it was for me. Keeping that in mind and also that it wasn't particularly windy that day, my average speed was 23.3 k's per hour and the overall time I spent outside <laughs> that day was 18 hours 28 minutes. Here you can see my speed and estimated power outputs all throughout the ride. I don't have a power meter so this is not precise and I don't really have anything to look up my speed on. Uh, my phone was in my bag, I didn't want it to, you know, die on me <laughs> because I needed this Strava ride to analyze later on and just to show off. I wasn't aiming for any particular time. All I really wanted is to <laughs> just be out there and ride and see new landscapes, see new cities, uh, experience new roads. So I just went by feel and I pretty much know my body and when I'm tired, when I need to go easier because there's also no changes in terrain and landscapes then it doesn't really matter that much, I think. Personally, I don't know. Judging by the speed and end, I just couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> And also during the ride I burned 5,240 calories and I guess I'll get into what I ate during the ride. Now with me I packed two cliff bars, a bag of skittles and like a box of date bars which I prepared myself at home. Some people say you should eat one gram of carbs per kilo body weight per hour. I didn't go that deep <laughs> because I don't like to calculate calories and little micronutrients and all of that stuff. So I just ate before I was hungry and made sure I'm constantly satiated. I made a couple of stops in the shops. I got the sweetest and most calorie dense foods in the sense of carbohydrates that I can possibly get. I bought juices, I poured sugar in them, I got watermelons, poured sugar on them. <laughs> You know, I got extra bags of Skittles and what I learned personally about myself during these rides is that I need new flavors, I need a variety of sweet foods. I don't like savory stuff, like even generally in real life I have a massive sweet tooth, uh, but especially in these rides I just need different sweet flavors. So. Oftentimes, whole foods is just just isn't enough for me. I need artificial chemical sweetness. So I found that Skittles was the perfect endurance food for me. I tested that later on when I was touring also. It just kept me so sharp and focused. The glucose just went directly to the cells and it was like 
boom <laughs> and also foods that are a bit heavier not that much like for example i had two cliff bars and it was hard for me to eat them and later on i didn't feel good at all because your body is already using up a lot of energy to keep you moving and if you put something really heavy and hard to digest in it, it will take even more energy to do that. The quicker and refiner foods are, the easier it is for your body to get that instant energy that it needs on such epic, long rides. So that's on food. Uh, the water, well, <laughs> if I remember right, I drank around 8 liters of water that day, besides juice. So basically I was drinking before I was thirsty and it wasn't like I was pushing the water in, <laughs> like no, I just naturally wanted to drink more to stay hydrated and also I wasn't so conscious about it as I was about eating, so yeah, what else can I share? Oh, I had one puncture and it was on the furthest point from home as I can possibly be, like on the mark of 160 k's i got a puncture on my back wheel and my pump didn't work at all from all the f water flushing in the morning so fortunately there were people that were touring and they sort of helped me out <laughs> with their pump when you get interrupted for an hour and then you need to find ways how to make the lighting work again yeah the struggle <laughs> but i think where i left off was if you don't have some specific tools with you or your pump doesn't work anymore try asking people i'm sure you'll find ways find help and figure everything out so yeah that's it for the technical details like there's still goals <laughs> my goals for 2017 <laughs> I'm not too optimistic about sharing my goals just because I like to keep them for myself and commit, commit to them whenever I want to, but since I promised then I want to cycle 400Ks in a day. I'll probably do it in August or July and I want to take the same route, although I need to incorporate those ATKs somewhere, somehow. I'm, I don't know how, like the route is the most problematic part of this adventure that I'm planning because there's just no routes and I don't want to go in circles. I don't want to be bored like last time and I also don't want the road to be too complicated. Like easy to follow you know so that's still a challenge for me <laughs> like i don't care about the physical and mental challenges but the only problem i have is to create the route like first world problems okay so i hope you got something out of this i hope you got something out of all of these three videos maybe you also want to do something similar and partake in this challenge and ride as much as you can as long as you can um, for me, the most important and the most valuable thing that I get from these challenges is just the adventure and the memories and the experiences that I have. I believe that I learned so, so freaking much from it and I grow as a person and I become stronger mentally and probably physically as well. It just broadens your understanding of what you're physically capable of and the challenges that you might face day to day. You know, if you're feeling down, if you're going through a hard time, you just remember <laughs> what it felt like in those last 20Ks and everything seems so easy <laughs> all of a sudden. So yeah, I just like the feeling of being out there unsupported, free to go and do whatever I want. So if you're still hesitant, if you're still not sure that you'll be able to cycle 300Ks or face the mental challenges along the way, then try to train your mind. Try to do 100K rides, try to do 200K rides, build your way up, you know? Don't just jump into it. <laughs> you know, I've been on a 30K ride, you can, now I can do uh, 300k rides. Maybe you can, I don't know man, maybe you really can, but I believe in training and working my way up uh, rather than jumping into something like a marathon for example. And an idea that I want to leave you with is that it doesn't matter what happens to you, it's how you deal with it. <laughs> Remember this please. So get amongst it, carve the fuck up and be vegan. 
Just skip the pepperoni, keep the dairy aside. I know what you're thinking, that's bruschetta. Nah, we got the soy cheese counterfeit cheddar. Hook up the nachos, guacamole tacos, avocado sushi, domo origato. What do you eat? What about meat? What about protein? What about cheese? 